in a previous video, I had demonstrated how I use the CAM module in Fusion 360 to export curf adjusted profiles into DXF files. Now I'm going to quickly show you how I then bring those files into Illustrator. So if I look to open a new file, I've got this DXF file that has the layers uh, for all of the walls and the bottom of this open top finger jointed box that I've designed in other videos. So if I open this up, because I have millimeters set as the default in Fusion 360, I also have millimeters set as the default in Illustrator. So I want to make sure that the scale by is 100% and the scale is one unit to one millimeter. Now, if you're using inches in Illustrator, then it will look like this when you first open uh, the file. And then when you go to millimeters here, it'll be 25.4, so you have to change this to one. But you want this scale to be one and one to millimeters, assuming that you're following my configuration for Fusion 360. So I'll hit OK, and Illustrator will open the file, and you'll notice now, because I had the different setups in Fusion 360, and I had the post-processor set up to put operations into separate layers, I have five layers now, one for each wall, and for the bottom of the box. So I'm going to turn these off. I'll turn on the first layer. I'm going to do a command A or control A to select everything. And one of the things that unfortunately because of the way that the CAM module sends data to the post processor based on what I've been able to understand by looking at scripts, each of these lines is a separate line which is not necessarily what we want because the, at least on the Glowforge, these lines could end up being cut separately and then you'll end up with hot spots and corners uh, and it's just generally not what you want. So what I like to do, and not to mention the fact that it's harder to manage here in Illustrator. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna Command A or Control A to select them all and then I'm gonna hit Command J or I believe Control J on a PC to join all of those lines. And if everything is working correctly, you will just get a representation of exactly the profile that you had before. If you end up with any strange lines appearing here, that means either you've selected too much, maybe you left all of the layers on. So if I undo that and then I'll open two layers, I'll select them and join them. And then you see it added this extra line here because it's actually joining the lines from the two layers together and it does it incorrectly. But generally, if you end up with strange lines appearing here after you join them, that means you have extra anchor points or you've selected too much or something has gone wrong. There's a number of different ways that it can go wrong that I unfortunately can't get into here. But just make sure that the profile looks how you expect it to look. So again, Command A and then uh, Command J. I'll join all of those lines and I will move this up and then I will go to the second layer same thing I will this time drag I can't do a command A because I don't want to select this one up here but I'll drag and select all of those and then command J to join those together I will drag that out of the way same thing for the next layer Move it out of the way, and then the last two layers here. So now I've got the five shapes I need to cut the box based on the dimensions from Fusion 360 and everything's curve adjusted. Now the last thing I do here is select them all, and I change the stroke from this 0.709 to just one point. Um, Sometimes these lines can get very thin and sometimes they're, they appear like, or they don't appear, or you can't see them when you're out, but if you uh, zoom in, you can see them. 
So I just change them to one point, makes them easier to appear. Uh, if you're just doing cuts, then it doesn't really have any, it doesn't have any impact on the way that the job is going to cut. Now the next thing that I do is go up to File New, and if you've seen Chris Masto's video on setting up uh, templates for Glowforge, I highly recommend you use that setup, but I will bring these in, and I have a metric version of the Glowforge template and a, uh, an Imperial version, so you can use either one here. We can use the Imperial version. I'll create a new document. I'll select all of these. I will copy them from there to the Glowforge template. And then I can go through and do whatever I want to do by maybe I can make these all separate colors if I want to cut them one at a time, if I want to control the order that they're cut in. I can do that or I can just select them all and often I'll just do all of my cuts as the last operation in a job. So I'll make them orange. I don't often use yellow because it's hard to see, but I'll use this um, number 12 orange and then I've got my cut jobs and obviously I can move them around to line them up however I want. And then once I have created this, I can export it as an SCG and again, I highly recommend you look at uh, information posted from Chris Masto for this uh, because he's done an excellent job of researching the, the uh, setup for all of this. But that's it. That's an easy way to get all of my cuts from, from Fusion 360 into a format that can be consumed on the Glowforge. This gets more complicated if I have a more complex model with holes. Uh, in in the bodies and I will definitely be demonstrating that in future videos and I will try to point it out when that occurs but this is the general approach that I use I find it fairly reliable uh, and for the most part it's relatively easy so I hope this was useful uh, leave comments um, or feedback or criticism below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video